Hello and welcome, my name is John Strand, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what we mean whenever we talk about actual intelligence, as in AI hunter. Before we jump straight in and actually start discussing this, we gotta talk a little bit about some of the problems that we are seeing in the industry today. There are a number of backdoors that use a wide variety of different ways to communicate with bad guys' command and control servers. This is the way that they will communicate with the system they have compromised on the inside of a network to communicate outbound to some other network on the internet. And this can be done through HTTP beaconing, social media such as Gmail or Tumblr or Twitter, DNS traffic, quick protocol for UDP for multi-honed streaming data, and also SCTP. Now, traditional security technologies are very, very, very ill-equipped to actually detect this type of attack traffic. And the main reason why is they're trying to look for specific signatures in very specific packets or even TCP streams to make a determination as to whether or not this communication between an internal compromised computer system and a server out online is actually malicious. And this makes sense because it's fast and it's very, very quick. You're basically looking for blue cars. You find a blue car, you say the blue car is bad, you move on. However, with the modern kind of command and control that we're seeing with bad guys today, it's not just a single car or a single packet or a single TCP stream. It may be a collection of a whole bunch of different communications spread over a long period of time. This makes detection far more difficult with traditional signature-based detection. Also, in addition to that problem, well, training people can also be incredibly difficult. The ramp up time for a security professional in a SOC to go from somebody who's just getting out of college or just getting started with computer security to the point where they're proficient to actually go through and start hunting for these types of backdoors is quite a long time. In some situations, it could take months or even years. But these are the tricks that pen testing firms and also bad guys use all of the time. So how can we detect these backdoors if the data is encrypted, obfuscated, or somewhat hidden? Now we could use artificial intelligence. Now, please don't, don't freak out. I know that that's a marketing buzzword. I totally, completely understand that. Just please don't stop watching yet because we're going to talk about how we can couple artificial intelligence algorithms to help identify the beacons that we have listed up above and use algorithms like k-means clustering to be able to detect those back doors. So let's get started with kind of an overview. Now, when we're trying to think about consistencies, with a back door, there's going to be some consistencies. It may be a number of different things or they, bad guys may try to randomize these, but there's going to be some consistencies. Now, believe it or not, Consistence are kind of consistencies are kind of inconsistent. A normal human being going to the internet isn't clicking a link every five seconds at a very regular interval. They're not always making sure that every single packet they sent to Gmail is the exact same size, and they're not trying to make sure that their histogram is evenly dispersed. So when we're looking for these consistencies, we're actually looking for automated communication leaving a network. And yes, you will see automated communication to different organizations like Microsoft and Google and Akamai, and we can easily filter that data out to try to sift down to find this potentially malicious activity that exists in an organization. So let's just use an example of interval. When we're trying to identify interval beacons, we're looking for a beacon that has a consistent heartbeat. We don't care what the spacing is of that heartbeat. We're just basically checking to see if that heartbeat is in fact consistent. Let's say the backdoor beacons out once every two seconds, 12 seconds, five minutes, it doesn't really matter, as long as it is in fact a consistent interval. And when we're looking at that difference in those intervals, we're seeing how far off of a perfect interval it actually is. So in this example, I have a cluster of a number of connections. The closer it gets to a one or a perfect interval, i.e. the closer it is to the bottom of that little arrow line that I drew, the more perfect that interval is. Now, when we're looking for intervals, we don't expect them to be consistent to the point where they're perfect. Because even in computers, you're going to see some level of inconsistency in those data connections. There may be a slight bit of variance and a slight bit of jitter. That's going to create a cluster pattern, and we can identify those cluster patterns. Now, how do we identify those cluster patterns? Well, turns out the algorithm we're using is k-means clustering, at least one of the algorithms that we're actually using. By doing frequency analysis to try to identify back doors, it gives us the ability to not look for a signature in like a blue car or a packet or a TCP stream, but rather we can look at how the packets behave in relation over a long period of time. And this is also one of those issues that you run into that you can't really have a signature-based detection engine tell you immediately when a beacon has occurred because it needs a lot of data to actually train that algorithm to find the clusters. And that's why Rita, which is the heart of AI Hunt, takes like 24 hours 
parses all the connections in your environment, looking for these consistent heartbeats. Now let me show you what this looks like in AI Hunt in our front end. Now when you're looking inside of AI Hunter, or our actual intelligence hunter, this is what a beacon looks like. So here we have a beacon with a backdoor that we've created called VS Agent. If you look across the bottom, you can see that we have a very consistent interval in so far as how long these connections have spacing in between them. And I can change the uh, fidelity, and you can see that pretty much we have a very, very, very consistent interval. It's a very flat histogram. Then up here, you can see that I have this 10 second interval. It says that we had almost 8,000 connections that were at a perfect 10 seconds. Once again, a very good indication of a very consistent heartbeat. But there's other ways that we can look at the statistical anomalies or the consistencies in this situation to identify whether or not this is an abnormal beacon leaving an environment. We can also look at the dispersion. I want you to think of a bell curve and the dispersion is, is that dispersion equal on either side of the bell curve? Once again, there may be some jitter at play. You may have some backdoors like PowerShell Empire or Trevor C2 that'll introduce jitter, but whenever you use a function in Python, when you use a function in PowerShell to generate that jitter or that randomness, it's going to try to randomly disperse evenly between the random intervals that you have established. We can also look at this in data size. If I simply click the little two here, you can see that once again, we have the intervals down below, but our graph up here has now changed and it showed us that we had 9,000 connections and we had vast majority of our packets had roughly 500 bytes in them. So that means we have a very consistent data size. We have a very consistent interval. They're not perfect. You see some of the packets were a little bit larger and that would be expected if the bad guy's using the back door. So this is how we use artificial intelligence to help develop actual intelligence by putting this data in the hands of a security analyst in a way that they can visually represent it and see it easily makes it so we can have very powerful tools using artificial intelligence algorithms that we can put in the hands of junior SOC analysts so that they can adequately go about hunting for bad guys that are communicating outbound from your networks. I hope this helps clear up exactly what it is we are doing with AI Hunter and the Reader Frameworks, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.